Questions 11 through 20 on the 2020 Grade 9 Pascal Math Contest. Anna thinks of an integer. It is not a multiple of 3. It is not a perfect square. The sum of the digits is a prime number. Anna could be thinking of which number. Let's go through the answer choices. It's not a multiple of 3, so can't be 12, can't be 21. Those are multiples of 3. It is not a perfect square. Can't be 16, because that is 4 squared. Now we're left with 14 and 26. The sum of the digits is a prime. Sum of the digits of 14 is 1 and 4, which is 5. Sum of the digits of 26 is 2 plus 6, which is 8. Which one of these is prime? Well, obviously this one. So that number is 14. Number 11, the answer is B. Natalie, Harpreet are the same height. Jia Yin's height is 161. The average of the heights of Natalie, Harpreet, and Jia Yin is 171. What is Natalie's height? Well, Natalie and Harpreet, I will give X to represent their height. Jia Yin is 161. So the average is calculated, as I'm certain you know. You add and divide by the number of people, which in this case is 3. And they told me that the average is 171. So this is the math. So that means 2x plus 161 would be 3 times 171, which is 513. So 2x will be 352, and therefore x is 176. x represents the height of Natalie, therefore number 12. The answer is C. The ratio of apples to bananas in a box is 3 to 2. The total number of apples and bananas in the box cannot be equal to. So apples to bananas is 3 to 2. So that means I can say the number of apples is 3x and the number of bananas is 2x. The ratio would still be 3 to 2. So the number of apples plus the number of bananas would be 3x, since A is represented by 3x and B is represented by 2x. And adding that, you get 5x. So obviously, A plus B is some multiple of 5, 5x. Well, all of these are multiples of 5, except this one. So it cannot be equal to that. Number 13, the answer is E. A sequence of figures is formed using tiles. Each tile is an equilateral triangle with side length 7. The first figure consists of one tile. Each figure after the first is formed by adding one tile to the previous figure. The first four figures are shown. How many tiles are used to form the figure in the sequence with perimeter 91? Let's make a little, not necessarily a table, but a list. So this is one tile, so the number of tiles, I guess. This is two tiles, three tiles, four tiles, and so on, right? Five tiles, dot, dot, dot. And then how many uh, sides does each have? That will give me an idea of what is the perimeter. So this one has three sides. So three times seven is the perimeter which is 21. This has one, two, three, four sides because we're looking at the perimeter now. So that's four times seven. This has one, two, three, four, five. Five of those sevens, I think that's a better way of saying it. This one has one, two, three, four, five, six of those sevens and then so on. So you kind of see a very clear, clear pattern. This would most likely be seven times seven for the perimeter. So this is the perimeter. So now we want to get to a perimeter of 91. So 91 will be obviously something times 7. So something times 7. And if you divide 91 by 7, you get that is 13. So this is a 13 by 7 perimeter. And the number of tiles, if you notice, there is a relationship between the number of tiles and how many times you had to multiply 7. The number of tiles is always 2 less. So if this is 13, the number of tiles would be 11. So just be careful there. Number 14, the answer is B. In the diagram, the large square has an area of 49, the medium square 25, small square 9. The region inside the small square is shaded. The region between the large and medium squares is shaded. What is the total area of the shaded regions? Well, 
we'll call this A, and we'll call this B. I think B is the easiest, so if we want B plus A, B is just that 3 by 3 uh, square, which actually they even just told me it's 9, so might as well just put 9. Now A would be the big square minus the medium square. So that's going to be 49 minus 25. So 9 plus 29 minus 45 is 24. So this looks like 33. So number 15, the answer is A. Which of the following expressions is not equivalent to 3x plus 6? Well, let's do each one. This is 3x plus 6. This, if you divide through by negative 3, it looks like 3x plus 6. This one is x plus 6. Okay, well, let's see. This one is 3x plus 6, and so is this one. Therefore, number 16 is C. Ben participates in a prize draw. He receives one prize that is equally likely to be worth 5, 10, or 20. Jamie participates in different prize draws. She receives one prize that is equally likely to be 30 or 40. What is the probability that the total value of the prizes is exactly 50? So Ben and Jamie, 5, 10, and 20, 30, and 40. So the combinations would be 5 and 30, 5 and 40. 10 and 30, 10 and 40, or 20 and 30, and 20 and 40. Now let's add them up, the sums. So the sums would be 35, 45, this sum is 40, this sum is 50, this sum is 50, and this sum is 60. So of the six, one, two, three, four, five, six possible uh, ways of getting a sum, 50 happens 1, 2, twice. So 2 out of the 6 or 1 out of 3. So number 17, the answer is B. N is a multiple of 7. The square root of N is between 17 and 18. How many possible values of N are there? So N is equal to 7K. And then the square root of N is between 18 and 17. So square everything. And this becomes N. But then 17 squared is 289 and 18 squared is 324. So how many multiples of 7 are there between 289 and 324? Well, uh, let's put 289 here. We've got a little boundary here and then 324 is our other boundary. The first multiple of 7 that's greater than 289 is 294 because that is 42 times 7. And then you just keep adding 7, 301, 308, 315, 322, and then I will be beyond my boundary. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 is the answer to number 18. That would be D. Each of the following 15 cards has a letter on one side and a positive integer on the other side. What is the minimum number of cards that need to be turned over to check if the following statement is true. If a card has a lowercase letter on one side, then it has an odd integer on the other side. This question is a little tricky. So we have a whole bunch of cards here, and every card is in one of four categories, right? It can be either lowercase or uppercase, and if it is lowercase, it can have on the other side either an even or odd. If it's uppercase, it can have on the other side ev either an even or odd. So let's concentrate on our statement. Our statement is as follows, right here. If a card has a lowercase letter on one side, then it has an odd integer on the other side. So basically, if we have a lowercase letter on one side and odd on the other side, that statement is true. So this is fine. B is fine. If we have uppercase on one side and even, it doesn't affect our statement, so that's fine. If we have an uppercase and then an odd on the other side, that doesn't affect our statement. The only time our statement here is affected is with A. 
that if you have a lower case on one side and even on the other side. So we have to find any such uh, card that could violate that, that could basically be um, part of the A category. So how many lowercase letters are there and how many even uh, numbers are there? Lowercase looks like there's just that one guy. So if we flip it over, if it's even on the other side, that would violate this. So we definitely need to flip over that one. So I'll circle that one. And then that's the only even, uh, sorry, that's the only lowercase. Now we're looking at even integers. Even integers, if I flip it over and there's a lowercase on the other side, then that would also violate my statement. So which cards are even? This one is even and this one is even. And I think those are the only ones. So interestingly, only those three need to be flipped in order to check if this statement is true. So that would mean number 19, the answer is E. A large 5 by 5 by 5 cube is formed using 125 small unit cubes. There are three central columns, each passing through the small cube at the very center of the large cube, one from top to bottom, one from front to back, one from left to right. All the small cubes that make up these three columns are removed. What is the surface area of the resulting solid? So we've got this five by five cube and the central, I guess, column will be either here, it will be here, and it will be here. So those are the spots. And then we're gonna basically take out that entire column so top to bottom, left to right, front to back. And then what's left, we have to calculate the surface area. All right, so the, the faces, that's pretty straightforward. That's going to be easy. There's six faces, and each face will have a surface area of 5 times 5 with this subtracted, which is just a 1 by 1. So that's the easy part. So that's 6 times 25 minus 1, so 6 times 24. Okay. And that is 144. All right, now we got to think about what's inside, and that's a little bit more trickier and not my favorite. It gives me a headache when I have to think about these things, but it's not so bad. When we think about it on the inside, it will be all the way down top to bottom, right? So all the way do down top to bottom is 5, but there's one missing in the very middle. If you can visualize that, there'll be one missing in the very middle where the this one, this guy, and this guy... Ma uh, meet, there'll be one unit cube missing from the very center. So it's actually not five down, it's four down because you have to subtract that one in the middle. And there's four sides, one on this side, one on that side, one on that side, and one on that side. So there's four sides. Each side has a surface area of four. So four times four. So four times four. But the same story holds true for this and for that. Exactly what I said. So you then have to multiply by 3 because you're going to do the same thing for that, that, and that. So 3 times 4 times 4, what is that? 16 times 3, which is 48. So I have to add this 144 to the 48, and when I do, I get 192. And I believe that's it. Number 20, the answer is E.